You know, although um, mums meetings and toddler groups are a very good thing, it is also a breeding ground for fierce competition, as in sort of, oh, my baby took its first step the other day, and you're just thinking, oh, mine didn't, and sort of, mine can say mumma, and you think, well, mine can't, and you say, oh, God, now my child's a retard, and then you start to, <laughs> well, you start to worry such a lot, don't you? And you just think, well, what's, why is my child different? Why hasn't my child done that? And particularly, if your child is the last one to walk in, every week or every day that you meet up with the mums and everything, and suddenly it's like, oh, mine did, you know, sort of a few days after yours did, and, da -da -da, and suddenly it's like, well, mine still hasn't, and they're yeah. all roughly the same age. I think it's a horrible, horrible pressure. Mm -hmm. Every child develops at a different rate. Mm -hmm. One might walk quicker. My daughter, uh, my second child, walked at 10 months, which was very, That's very funny. young, yeah. but she didn't talk until much later, mm -hmm. whereas my son didn't walk till 15 months, mm -hmm. but he was talking. Well, he was the one that was like saying car and Ford and <laughs> Bentley and, uh, <laughs> and all that sort of thing. So they all develop at different rates, but you feel, gosh, well, if theirs are doing that, mine should be doing that too. Yeah. Horrible. And isn't it also potentially a way of picking up problems if there are problems? I mean, if you've not had a baby before, and you, you know, maybe your baby's partially deaf or deaf, and you don't know when they're meant to start talking, mm. it might be a good thing to have other mothers pointing out that, mm, don't you think little but Johnny should be saying mum? Yeah, absolutely, that right but, you have, but with the, the, in theory, going to sort of like the, the baby clinic and things like that, they are doing those tests a regular basis you could turn neurotic a baby's two months old and suddenly you're suffering neurosis because you think oh it didn't do this oh god it hasn't done that it's not feeding properly it's not that the color of the poos the wrong color now it's not doing this and it mm -hmm. it starts very but doctors mm -hmm. don't always pick things up now i had this um, experience in my mother's group where one of the women's baby looked so sick and we were all saying you've got to go to the hospital that baby was it just wasn't moving and she said i've been to the doctor twice he says there's nothing wrong um, you know, and I'm really worried, but I don't know what to do. We all said, go to the hospital again. Just take her straight to emergency, because we could see this baby looked lifeless. Had meningitis. No. Oh, nearly no. died, and her doctor hadn't picked up on it. And thank God for the mother's yes. group, because we were all like, no baby should look like that, you know. And mm. that, so I think sometimes that whole kind of concern of the other yes. mothers can, can help. Yes. I mean, that was a very extreme case, but I don't think doctors always do pick everything no, up, actually. No, perhaps not. There's but a but difference between concern. I mean, concern exactly. is a good and thing, competition. but competition, there yes. are horrible And you can suss mums. out the ones, because they're kind of going, yeah. Yeah, aren't they? So and they dress smug. the babies in designer oh, yes. clothes, as oh, if the baby oh, yes. cares. You know, as if the baby cares and it's got designer labels on. And they, they on. all go yeah. dress up to come to the mum and toddler group as well, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Make up. Yeah, oh, I God, know. it's like at school. And I sort of sometimes, it's like in the morning. I mean, honestly, I would drop my children off in my dressing gown. I'd have a dressing gown on, coat on top, slippers on my feet. Like, oh, dear. <laughs> you know, like this. Sort of and you see all these mothers. And they didn't have to get out of the car, but they did. Because it was like sort of fashion shows sort of as they got out. Bye, darling, you yeah. know, like this sort of thing. And then they come back and collect them, sort of, at, you know, at the end of day at school. And they've changed again. Yeah. And they've got another outfit on. Uh, by then, I'm out of my, at least, thank God, my dressing gown. <laughs> and I'm wearing something fairly <laughs> sloppy and actually very practical. Yeah. It's ghastly. So the competition sort of like is, you know, through the children and everything. And themselves it actually horrible. It, starts, it even starts when you know when you're pregnant and shopping for the the right equipment like but this concern for the right equipment oh, yes. absolutely baffles Must me have that and people buying 600 pound pounds oh, yeah, they're going to last a year before they've outgrown exactly. them exactly yeah. and you know the, the the label on it and all i think that really set you know in the right bottles and the right you know yeah. it's all very you know i'm doing the best thing for my child because look paid lots of money but i did feel a <laughs> yeah. bit embarrassed about not having a posh pram because you we, did. We, no i felt embarrassed mm -hmm. and we got my father got me a pram which he found on a skip, right? And it was a perfectly nice pram. It was a silver cross and my husband went, oh, isn't that great? We don't have to buy a pram now. But I did feel embarrassed walking around with but this they, old pram. But it was yeah. others that made you feel bad then. Did well, you feel that they were looking and going, mm, yeah, that, that's that. last year's. Yeah. Yeah, well, no, that's <laughs> old pram. Last year's model. <laughs> and I, I sort of felt as though my motherhood wasn't being praised enough by the fact that my husband wouldn't buy me expensive things when all the other mothers had expensive things. I felt like, well, you know, why aren't I? Yeah, it's, it's sort of like yeah. a being put on a pedestal thing if your partner buys you expensive things for the baby and you feel a bit cherished. So, yeah. yeah no, <laughs> but then, then maybe that's the thing. You didn't feel sort of 
um, noticed or worthy. So maybe that's the thing as well, that, that sort of, this is so precious to me, this child, I must yeah. do everything to make yeah. that child worthy. That child yeah. is worth yeah. that and everything. Yeah, yeah that's, but isn't that's that stupid? It. It is stupid. I mean, and I remember stupid. this baby book I read. It was everything you needed to know about babies from the age of one to three. I have to say, after that, after that book finished and they were three years old, I floundered. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but it was saying, you know, a baby comes into the world. If you haven't got a cot, Put them in a in a drawer. Yeah, yeah, it was exactly, literally yeah. that. Or my a little brother was box. in um was in a suitcase because yeah. he was premature. Yeah, yeah. Oh. But talking about the competition, uh, or not even competition, but being made to feel that you're inadequate because um what my children with the advent of of um of what they called stick on. Pampers. Yeah, all that sort of thing. Disposable yeah. nappies. Thank you. <laughs> Is that the word? Thank you. You see, it affects the brain. <laughs> Disposable nappies, I think that w that's what lulls the baby into thinking it's okay to wee in the middle of the night because I'm not going to feel uncomfortable because mm. it's all soaked up, isn't it? So they do seem to be now, um, later, get, uh, getting out of, out of nappies and, oh, and being dry. Oh, good theory. Yeah. I never thought about well, it. Well, that's like my that. theory. That's well, what I think. Well, it's a brilliant theory that makes absolute sense. But my... Um, the, another pair of godparents for my children made me feel terrible because they said you mean they're not dry yet Do you, have, yeah. you have to still put nappies on them and, and uh, pampers and things on them I, and I felt terrible I felt mm. as if I'd failed my kids because I hadn't yes. weaned them off of off of nappies but yet. But that's it's another yeah. pressure it's another pressure on motherhood and that you then impose on your child also the other thing True. is I mean with working mums and I have to say it and I in an ideal world, we shouldn't work. We really yeah, shouldn't, because we haven't got time to do those things. And that's where children learn so quickly before. Your theory is brilliant about the thing, the discomfort of being wet. They're not going to notice with these new nappies. But all that is time consuming, and it yeah. does take time. Yeah. And it's much quicker to just think, oh, I haven't got time to take them to the, to the loo, and all the false alarms yeah. and yeah. everything. You know, it's, it's a time waster, if you like. Oh, let them just sort of get on with it, and it'll happen. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you think competition gets worse as the kids get older with the other mothers, kind of like how well they're doing at No, but school I think it gets worse with them between themselves yeah, and then exactly. that starts to kick in because they suddenly get very conscious, ooh, look, sort of like the trainers and it's brilliant to have uniform, at least mm. at schools, so, uh, but there are totally other agree. things that, that do come into it, like they might have a really fantastic pen, let's say, in the classroom. Yeah. So it starts, yes, with the mothers competing with each other, like sort of bragging about their babies and it gets introduced it into yeah. them. Yeah. yeah, I think it's the whole way through.